What is going on guys? It is Jono and today we're going to be talking about my favorite topic, which is how you can automate 95% of your entire service based business. Now I know that is a very bold claim. The reason I'm saying that is because that is exactly what I've done with my business and I know you guys can do it too. And in this video, I'm going to share the blueprints on how exactly you can do the same thing. So before I begin, I just want to kind of point out what I mean by a service-based business. So <clears throat> when I'm talking about a service-based business, I'm talking about like a personal service or like a professional service. So things like lawn care, consulting, handyman services, creative services, legal services, cleaning services, pet sitting, event planning, real estate broker, uh, financial services, life coach, nutritionist, personalized trainer, bookkeeper. It's essentially where you're signing somebody up to render a particular service at a particular point in time probably not like a casual coffee shop where somebody's walking in it probably the workflow that i'm going to show you might not work for that but essentially this is what it looks like right it's this um, flow chart that I've built out here. And if you guys look at this and you think, holy crap, that's so complicated. I'm here to tell you that this is a very simplified version and it's way more complicated than this. But with that being said, <laughs> by the end of the video, you are going to hopefully understand every single nook and cranny on this and it's gonna make total sense. And then you can go off and start implementing it into your business immediately. So um, it's all color coded, but essentially what this um, flow chart represents is the customer life cycle journey of that person going through your business. So it breaks down all the major milestones that you have to uh, interact with that person, right? So transactions, like they visit your website and they um, fill out the quote form and you jump on a sales call, all that kind of stuff, right? Those are the milestones that you have to interact with your customers at. And to start off with, we have the top of funnel, right? This is where you're getting your leads from. And every service-based business is going to be getting leads from somewhere. But the most common ones typically are things like SEO or Google ads or Bark or social media. Um, Bark is also, it's just like a third-party lead provider, similar to Angie's List, if you know that. But um, yeah, these are the, the main ones. But of course, you could be getting leads from so many different places. And barring bark.com, the majority of you out there are going to be driving all of these leads onto your website here, right? And <clears throat> on your website, right, somebody's gonna come through, you're gonna drive traffic here, and there's ultimately four uh, call to actions that you probably wanna have on your website. Number one is somebody just giving you a call if you have a phone number listed there, right? Number two is somebody filling out a quote form on your website, right? This is super common where somebody just gives their contact information, first name, last name, email, phone number, all that kind of stuff. Number three is a lead magnet. Oops, so what a lead magnet looks like, something just like this. It's, a, it's you offering a free product or a service in exchange for that person's contact information in the hopes that you can sell your products or your services at a later point in time to that person. So you collect things like the email, for example. And the last thing here is an appointment, right? So somebody just books an appointment with you on your uh, calendar and then you get onto a sales call. But ultimately speaking, with all of these different call to actions, there's really, for me at least, there's really only one goal and that is to drive somebody onto a sales call. And this is going to be for the majority of businesses. Obviously, some are gonna have you know different call to actions here, but just for the majority, it's a sales call because while you can sell through text messages and emails, the conversion rate typically is horrifically low and for whatever reason, the people that end up closing on text messages and emails are the last freaking clients in the freaking world <laughs> you probably want to work with anyways no offense to anyone if they actually are that kind of person but yeah i just find that like usually when you jump on sales calls you can filter out the people you do and do not want to work with and you get to work with the people that uh, ultimately make you happy so essentially that's it right now with these separate workflows they actually have automations attached to them and these automations come in the form of something like go high level right where you plug them into your CRM and you uh, you have them go down workflows. So in my particular workflow here, which obviously is like super, super complicated, but it doesn't have to be, it can be super simple. We just send our clients emails and text messages. So for example, if I open up this email or this text message here, I just say to the client, hey, uh, first name like Bob, it's Jono from whatever my company is. I just saw that you filled out a form on our website looking for whatever service you're looking for. I'm not free at the moment, but I'd love to jump on a call. You can book on my calendar here, right? So ultimately speaking, 
with this new lead workflow, we are just trying to get somebody to book an appointment. And then once they book that appointment, we're going to send off notifications like, hey, thanks for confirming your appointment or hey, Sandra, it's John. I'm going to be giving you a call in 30 minutes at this phone number. And the whole goal is to get them onto the sales call. If they go through the new lead magnets or the lead magnets, you're, you might have to, you know, nurture that person over a longer point in time. Now, this is like very deceiving, the sales call, because it's like this nice little cute uh, green box here. But this is actually one of the most complicated parts of the business because so many things are happening at this exact point in time. So for starters, uh, we like to drip content to these people um, over the following days or weeks, because ultimately speaking for most service-based businesses, people don't just reach out to you, they reach out to like three or five people. And we always wanna stay at the top of that client's mind so that um, by providing such high quality content that they feel almost indebted to us and it invokes the rule of reciprocity where they would want to move forward with us, right? Because they feel valued, they feel appreciated as potential customers. And what our sales call exactly looks like is this, right? So we actually have three panes and the main sales call is in the center. So we have a script that we walk the client through. We ask all of the questions, we front load all of the information on this particular sales call. We collect it one time so that we can use it to power all of the automations so that we can set it and forget it with that particular client. We also can collect notes and we can do cross sells and upsells and book future appointments. But once we collect all this information, like in our case, because it's a wedding space, we do like date and venue and start time, end time, all that kind of stuff. We can take that information and on the sales call, once it's done, automatically generate a fully customizable proposal like this. Like we're literally inputting like 150 different variables in here. As you can see here, this is 100% automated. All the line items they can pay and sign straight through the agreement, right? Which is super cool. And then we also like to send over a proposal to the person, right? So that after we get off the sales call, we'd like to summarize all of the information that we just talked about, like maybe sending over our portfolio, sending over our team, sending over the our difference, right? All of that kind of stuff is completely automated. And we send these, um, you know, emails with links to our proposal straight through go high level, right? So that we can, you know, tr uh, transfer that information or send that information over to the particular clients. And then we're dripping out this content over time, right? And also what we want to do at this point in time is schedule that follow-up call. Usually this happens right on the sales call right here. We'll just ask them to schedule another call. And really when it comes to the follow-up process, there's three outcomes, right? And those three outcomes are um, from a sale or follow-up call is the person's like, hell yeah, let's move forward. I'm ready to go, right? or they're not interested at which point in time you terminate them, or they might need more time, right? And if they need more time, you keep scheduling follow up calls. Now I have two sections here, which is um, if they schedule a call, then I just send them down a confirmed appointment, right? And what this confirmed appointment looks like is we send things like this. Here's an exact email like saying, hey, I just want to confirm our phone call on this date at this time. I look forward to speaking with you then. If you need to reschedule the appointment, you can do it straight through this link. If you need to cancel the appointment, you can do it here. And the cool thing about appointments in Go High Level is you can automate every part of the appointment. You can automate these emails as soon as somebody books an appointment. If somebody cancels through this link, you can send send them down a cancellation workflow trying to get them to rebook. If they no-show that appointment, you can also send them down a no-show sequence where you're like, hey, I noticed you didn't show up. I hope everything's okay. I'd love to have the opportunity to chat with you still. All of this stuff can be fully automated. So instead of you having to be the person to um, to send these emails or you having to pay somebody to send these emails for you, you can just automate it 100% through go high level. And also, let's say you jump off the sales call and the person is not convinced, like, huh, you know what? I don't want to schedule a, a sales or a follow-up call with you. You can enter them into like a follow-up automation where you just set a specific date. You're like, maybe in two weeks from now, I'm going to automatically send a text message and an email to follow up with this person to see where they're at. And the goal here is to keep following up over and over and over again until they give you a definitive answer. And that answer is either, hey, I'm not interested, no worries, or I'm ready to move forward. And then at that point in time, all they have to do is pay and sign this exact agreement. And this is, uh, there's so many things going on at this point in time, right? So the first thing we're doing 
is we are going to automate accounting and also sales analytics. So in a dashboard like this, we automatically um, track all analytics. So for example, in this particular dashboard, we're tracking sales analytics by sales rep, seeing how many leads they've sent off, how many of those have converted into contract signed, deposits paid, how much revenue their lead and call conversions. And all of that kind of stuff is going to be automatically tracked in real time. This information is pushed from go high level, dumped into a Google sheet, and then modeled in data studio. We do the same thing for accounting as well, so that we can model profit and revenue and all of that kind of stuff. The next thing is is very similar to the new lead workflow and we have these workflows for every stage we have an onboarding workflow here right where we essentially drip out notifications to that particular customer over a certain period of time so in the wedding space because we're rendering a date and that date is typically up to a year out we will set milestones like one year away and we'll email them after a year and 180 days away and we'll email them six months before and then 90 days before 60 days before 31 days before two weeks before one week before and same thing with our djs photographers videographers or our contractors we'll notify everyone on the team about the event and we'll keep them in the loop with all of the information that they need to know at any given point in time so that you're answering questions before they arise right so um, this is just a really nice way to automate all of your communication using a platform like go high level in addition to that we also have our project managers have an automated click up dashboard like this right so for example when somebody signs and pays the agreement we create an automated dash or click up project management file for them where we have all of the tasks that we need to do we assign it to people give due dates have the priority have the amount of time that it's going to take and then our team will slowly chip away at making sure that all of these things are done. Another cool thing that we have as well is we have our internal dashboard for our contractors where they can come in and as soon as something is confirmed, they can go ahead and they can book that show. And once they book that show, it's gonna appear on their dashboard and they can go in and they can see all of the details about that particular show. They can see how much they're getting paid I can see all the equipment being required, all of the details are all going to be centralized in one hub for them to do everything, right? So this is so powerful because, you know, think about all the questions that you do not have to answer because you have a software that is doing it for you, right? And so as soon as they paid and signed, we create the project management system, we assign a contractor or more so the contractor assigns them because we send a notification being like, hey, there's this new event, they claim it. And then we send notifications both to our contractors and to the clients over a given amount of time leading up to that event to make sure that everything's taken care of. The clients have finished um, you know, their onboarding, which is also another thing that happens in this contract workflow, they we have to onboard the client, right? And part of that onboarding process is, you know, for us to do our job properly, they need to give us the information we need. So we have a planning form, this gets sent out automatically to people. And uh, yeah, they can go through at their own cadence and just answer any questions that uh, we need for us to do our job properly. And we will once again, remind these clients to fill out their planning forms, and we'll remind the contractors that they have to do whatever they need to do leading up to the event. And then eventually, you know, those services, <laughs> they will be rendered. And then we will ask the clients will send another automated email sequence which is very similar to something like this right that and we'll ask them hey can you give us some feedback we'd love to hear how it went and then they'll just give us a feedback and assuming that feedback is good and we classify good as four or five stars for you know i like four stars as well just because when you see a four star review you're like that's legit you know what i mean <laughs> like if it's all five star reviews you're like hmm this doesn't seem super legit but anyways we always do four to five star reviews and as long as the review is good we ask them hey can you leave a review on Google can you leave uh, or and and then you know of course asking for those external reviews but also we drip out campaigns over the next year or two or three or four years where we ask for them to refer people to us or we ask for them to upsell or cross sell to other products or services we have promotional and seasonal campaigns that we send over to them right the list goes on and on and on there's so many different ways that you can upsell clients but in a nutshell that is how you can take a service-based business right and you can automate pretty much everything it's a beautiful thing and once you get this set up you really will realize that you don't have to work seven days anymore 
a week. You don't have to work 14 hours a day. You can pretty much automate yourself out of a job. And that is such a beautiful thing. So in a nutshell, guys, here is the entire blueprint to automate absolutely everything. And if you guys are interested in my blueprints for go high level, all of this kind of stuff, I'm actually going to be giving this away for free. How this works is I have an affiliate link down below. If you sign up with that affiliate link, I'm going to send you over some of the blueprints. And if you decide you'd like go high level and you're like, this makes sense to me, it fits my business use case and you end up paying for it, then I'll send over the second round of blueprints for you to automate your entire business. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you like Go High Level, you can sign up with the link below. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. And by the way, subscribe to this channel also if you haven't done so already, because I'm going to be releasing content just like this again. So for the second time, <laughs> goodbye.